Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to make some slime in Embergen, kind of like a slime generator. As we've already established in other videos, we can do a lot more than just smoke and fire in Embergen. Now the trick here is to make a load of smoke, but make it really, really heavy so it immediately sinks down to the floor. And also to change a couple of settings to do with dissipation and diffusion so that the smoke slows down as it moves, that's why it's sort of slowing to a crawl here. So follow these steps and you should be up and running in about 10 minutes. Here's our default scene. I'm going to change up our domain bounding box to be 512 by 512, but only 64 high. We really don't need the height. Might even actually just go to 32. Everything that we're doing is going to be on the ground. I'm going to remove this noise here. The volume emitter, the noise for that. I'm going to get rid of this. We're going to bring in a particle emitter and we're going to turn it on. But we're going to be using this primitive here in a different form as a box all the way wide, all the way tall, and just one in height. And we're going to tell it to emit frozen particles because they are super, super handy. Just so we can see what we're doing with these particles, I'm going to turn on the particle rendering, and we're going to pause these particles as well. I'm going to bring down the minimum to one so that they wake up fairly easy when we disturb them with another primitive. So we're going to bring in a sphere here. We're going to make it, what, 1.5, uh, and we are going to attach this to a collider. Bring the collide to the sim. Seems good. Now if we move this primitive around, yeah, it's waking up those particles, but we don't want these particles to be giving birth to any heat or flame. So let's play with our particle emitter. We want the smoke, that's good. Let's drag that up to 100, but everything else, we're gonna bring all the way down. All seems pretty good. I'm gonna bring on our emission rate all the way up because I want that floor to be, you know, as full of particles as possible. So I'm gonna turn off our particle render and as we play the sim and move our primitive around, we should see some smoke. That's pretty cool. Right, so now we need to change the behavior of that smoke. I'm going to go into our simulation node. And first of all, we're going to go to force. And we're going to bring buoyancy all the way down. Gravity amplifier, ramp it right up. Smoke weight. We want something like 55555. Five, five, five. Just something ridiculously heavy so it immediately falls down to the ground. Move our primitive around again. It's pretty good, but it's moving way too quick. So now we need to play with our dissipation and diffusion. I'm going to bring velocity dissipation up to something fairly high, say 90. And while we're here, we're going to turn off our smoke dissipation because we want that smoke to stick around. Uh, and our diffusion, velocity diffusion. Let's go with two and just see what effect that has. That's a pretty good start. Okay, so it's immediately falling down and then it's it's slowly coming to a crawl. Let's ramp our velocity dissipation right up and our diffusion there as well. In fact, while we're at it, getting a bit tired of dragging this thing around, let's, let's program this. Let's expose position to a node and then bring in an oscillator. It will suddenly disappear because it's picking up a value here that throws it way out of the domain. So let's, let's give it something quite subtle. So maybe minus 15 and 15, and then minus 15 and 15 there. We don't need to worry about Z, so we're just gonna zero that. That's cool, moving a bit fast, so we're gonna bring down the frequency. Uh, let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And I'm gonna bring the phase out between the X and Y. So they don't really have the, the same values plugged into them at the same time. So we should get more of a circular motion. That's pretty good. Already, I'm pretty happy with that because we've got some motion that's sort of carried on from the movement of this sphere. It does look a little bit odd though, so let's let's see if we can fix that. Right, it would appear that this sort of this spine of particles is probably because the primitive that is giving birth to our particles is actually quite high up in the sim. So I'm going to bring it down from Z2 to maybe Z0.5. That should start to minimise. There we go, that's much better. Now, our particles are waking up a little bit too easy here, so I'm going to have a bit of a balancing act with bringing that value uh, up a bit. So into our particle emitter, in our frozen tab, let's bring up minimum simulation force to see what two does. That's obviously too high, so 1.5, split the difference. That's good, so they're waking up directly behind the sphere, but it's not racing off in front of the sphere. If this was a, a much lower value, let's say 0.2, 
um, we'd see the effect spread outwards from the sphere way more quickly, which we don't want. That's not the effect we're after. It's pretty trippy, but it's not what we want. So 1.2, see what that does. I'm going to now start to color this smoke. Uh, and in the, the sim that I was showing you at the beginning, I was going for a sort of Ghostbusters 2 look. Let's get rid of this. Shading, smoke. We're going to expose a color gradient. Drag this out, bring in a gradient. And it will default to just the black and white. So let's, let's try and find out where some of these details are. So we've got there's something in there. If you start clicking around on this gradient, you can just bring in new points. And then from there, you can bring in a new color. Um, and rather than going with like wildly different colors, I'm, I'm going to stick with this kind of pink, but I'm going to bring in different shades of it. There we go. So we can kind of almost sort of fake some specularity on this. Worth noting, of course, that we can't shade this to actually be shiny in any way. Um, you're going to have to rely on playing around with color gradients until you find something that kind of works for you. And you might find that looking at this from one angle looks great, but then looking at it from another, it, it just breaks the illusion. But hopefully the, the motion of the simulation really helps to sort of carry the effect. There's a few things that you can change in here. We should be able to influence uh, you know, how much movement there is with the velocity transfer coming off of the collider. So that's going to send out a much more powerful wake. I tend to keep that as it is at 100 though and instead play around with the vorticity, diffusion and dissipation. There's another thing you can do to kind of enhance the effects of uh, this, this sort of ooze settling into its sort of final place. Uh, if you go into the simulation tab, go to diffusion. Uh, and when you come to smoke diffusion, it's turned off by default. Uh, what it does is it kind of fuzzes out uh, the longer the smoke is alive because we've told this smoke to never die, to never fade away. If we were to turn this on to 0.3 or thereabouts, the, the look of this will change. These ripples that have been around for a while will start to go. What you're left with then is, uh, you know, the detail is really where the most recent movement has occurred. Uh, and as you get further back in time, it just sort of averages out. So slime's cool and all, but you could use this for other things. You know, you could perhaps have a character model walking across a landscape and you're really pushing sort of uh, watery mud around. You could shade it, you know, appropriately and have something fairly believable looking. You could maybe use this for some lava. And of course, as a final thing, because this is you know, acting like a liquid, if we remove the diffusion of the velocity, bring down our vorticity, and yeah, and, th and then reshading it, the, you, know, you can really start to get something that kind of resembles water, uh, at least from above. You know, this, this wouldn't look great from the side, but from above, certainly. And I've got a far better example of this already prepared that I can show you in this preset. So this one's actually set up largely the same, you know, the, the same method of uh, having uh, a particle emitter base uh, that a collider is going through and interrupting and waking up those particles. Uh, but in the case of this this preset, which we'll make available for you to download and play with, um, you know we've we've played around with the the diffusion and the dissipation uh, and actually keyframed it to to be sort of you know high and low on and off, so that you can see the difference that it makes to the look of this simulation. There you go. That's how we can make some some goopy fluids and even turn it into a kind of sort of semi-water look. There's there's two presets that you can download to play around with. One is the, the sort of pink ooze from the first part of the tutorial, and also this one as well. So creating a kind of liquid effect with super heavy smoke in Embergen is actually pretty easy. We just need to use gravity to pull that smoke right down to the ground, and then tweak our velocity diffusion and dissipation settings to control how that fake fluid flows. Don't forget to come and chat with us and many other Embergen users on our Discord. It's a great place to ask for help if you get stuck. We'll see you in the next video.